When I was coming up with build ideas for this Dwarven series, I knew that the Dwarven Tomb had to be on that list. And of course, it's packed with a bunch of cool details, like a flickering candle on this offering table, some modular pillars that can come off with glowing orbs, and of course, a hidden little secret that I'll show you here in just a minute. That's this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. If this is your first time visiting the channel, you've just stumbled into the middle of a five-part Dwarven series that's going to end in an epic collaboration with Paladin Woodworking. This week's video, The Dwarven Tomb. I packed as many little details into this as I could. We got a little offering table at the foot of the tomb with a glowing candle, some mountain flowers and some gold coins for an offering. We've got these modular pillars that break off that could be used as separate objectives in other campaigns. And, of course, what tomb wouldn't be complete without a hidden staircase leading down to another level to explore. So, while you're watching the video, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the rest of the series. Alright, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. Okay, so if you grab the plans, this is what they're going to look like. There's a total of three sheets for the whole set. And start out by cutting out this main section of the tomb right here. We're going to apply this stencil and trace it out on a 2 inch block of XPS foam. Now this build can be done with an Ulfa knife without the Proxon, but there are some trickier cuts here um, that you'd have to make or um, come up with a different way of making them later on. Uh, they're pretty thin, so it might be kind of hard without the Proxon, but there's ways around it. Now the two inch block obviously is too thick for the tomb, so we're gonna shave a piece of this off right here. But hang on to that piece that we cut off that's smaller. We're gonna use that later on in the build. Now if you can't get the Dwarven bookend that I used for the top of this, you can take that piece that we cut off as well and use that to put your own design on. And you can still make this build with your very own custom tomb top for this piece. Now all we did was just shave off about an eighth of an inch around the whole top because we're going to make a little guide for the tomb to rest in. So what we're after is that really thin piece. And now I'm using the tomb to trace out exactly the size of this frame. And again, this is the part where you would make you know, your own top out of XPS foam or any other way you might come up with with your imagination here if you can't get that dwarven bookend. All right, now I like to start every project with a brand new X-Acto blade. You know, there's some pretty small cuts here. And if you have a dull blade, you're just going to end up tearing the foam. All right, so make sure to remove the top of the tomb and that frame before we trace this out. And this is going to be the stairs leading down into the secret area below the tomb. Okay, now on, again, a low heat, right? Because we're doing this whole thing freehand. I'm probably just over the two setting on the Proxon, going around the whole piece. And because I did it on low heat, where I cut into the outer frame of the tomb will go together very nicely. And you won't see that cut line uh, once we're done. Now taking the inner portion that we cut out, we're going to trace out the stair stencil onto it. And again, freehand cut with the Proxon, nice and slow. And we got ourselves a set of stairs and keep the other side for later on. You never know when you might need those. Now for these little modular pillars that are going to be part of the tomb, using the stencil here to cut these out, transfer that over to a piece of foam and you're all set. Now for some cuts like this, um, there are jigs out there that you can use. Uh, Shifting Lands makes a angle cutter, which would be really nice for this. But you know, you can just use a framing square and an Ulfa knife as well. Now this is kind of just by eye. I drew that other line on there and I'm cutting it nice and slow with the Ulfa knife to get that pyramid look. 
All right, this was a little nerve wracking because if you mess this up, you kind of have to start this piece over again. Take this hot wire knife and you just poke in a hole, try to keep it as level as possible. And this part right here was the, the tricky one because you have a lot less room for error on the sides. Push it straight through and then it's just like you're playing a game of operation. Pull it out real slow without trying to touch the sides there. And I ended up making them a lot bigger because I wanted to be able to see the diode a little bit better anyway when the build was complete. Now this dotted line that we're marking on the pillar here, we're going to make that cut as you can see with the Proxon or an Alpha knife. And that's going to be how we're going to hide the battery for the glowing orb that's going to be in this pillar. Now I used a pin for this part because the hot wire knife burns way too hot for this hole. I wanted to just have a nice small section that I could stick that diode up through and not a really big area because then it would just kind of be like wobbling all around in there. Then we can go back to the hot wire knife to cut out a little square section for the battery and use a clay sculpting tool just to gouge those little pieces out of there. And just make it adjusted to fit. You can see that little slot there is how we're going to put the diode in. I'll put a link up above to my LED torch video, which will give you a better idea of how I like to uh, secure the diode and the battery into my builds. Then we'll just add a couple of magnets so it snaps into place. And obviously this looked a little too, you know, blah, right? Uh, just having it go nice and square all the way up to the top of the pillar. So I just decided to cut a few uh, corner sections out, which, uh, you know, transformed it quite a bit. We need to shave off a little piece off of each side as well as the very top, that little one inch section by my index finger. Then we go back to the plans and what we're going to do is we're going to cut this pattern out of that small piece that we just cut off of the tomb. And that center piece is going to be for one of those tokens that we used in the Dwarven door. You can find a link to all the items that I've used in this video, the tools, that coin that you see there, all that stuff for this video in the Amazon links in the description below. Now, because I don't want to wait uh, with tacky glue, if you use hot glue, just a very little bit on here is all you need, and you can kind of get it in place and keep moving. When you're working with smaller pieces like this too, it helps to turn your hot glue gun off, and then wait until it cools, turn it on, and get going on the part that you need to glue right away as the glue is really not that hot coming out of the glue gun, and it will help you uh, work with these smaller sections without burning them. Then to make these modular, obviously we're just going to add a couple of magnets uh, into these sections right here. And as you can see, this is going to be a magnet that's going to go into the tomb itself as well on that angled section. All right, now this is a cool little piece. I was really excited to do this here. This is going to be like an offering table at the foot of the tomb. So that first angled piece will give you the side and this will obviously give you the top dimension for the table. All right, now notice the shape of the pin. It's at a little bit of an arc. I bent it that way on purpose. So when I press the pin in, I can go in and turn and up and make like a little J channel going through this piece of foam. You'll see why that's useful here in just a minute. Now in the back of the tomb, uh, we've cut out a section here um, for the battery to fit into. And now we're going to have to cut another little section out on the back of the stairs again because the battery would be hitting this piece. So this is a little bit of tacky glue that I put on here. Whenever you use tacky glue, 
It's nice to apply it to both surfaces, not just one piece. So I put a little bit on the frame of the tomb and then obviously you can see a whole bunch of it there on the stairs. All right, back to hot glue again because I didn't feel like waiting for this to cure on me. And you want to make sure not to glue, obviously, the lid of the tomb on. That's just on there to help get the frame in place correctly. So a nice little tip is, you know, once you get on there, pull it off quickly. That way, in case there is any glue on it, it's not going to uh, be an issue. All right, now on your plan, there'll just be that one piece right there. I like to make some changes and modifications on my plans as I'm making them. So once you get that base stencil cut out, transfer it over to a half inch piece of XPS foam using the framing square and alpha knife, cut it out, and you're ready to mount the tomb to this base. All right, now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know I'm all about little details, right? Little tiny bits that really make something stand out. And this is one of those things. These little step ups onto the tomb area, you know, the corners needed something, so I cut those out. And you'll see what I'm gonna do here in just a minute, what's gonna make them stand out even more, very subtly. And to keep with the architecture of the whole series, I'm adding some of these pointy spire pieces to this pillar as well. You would have seen this in the Dwarven door and the Dwarven pillars. All right, so now this is what I was talking about. Look at the small, tiny little section here. I'm using this X-Acto knife. Again, a brand new sharp blade. And this tiny little piece that I'm cutting out. Now, right now it doesn't look like much, but to me, it made a world of a difference with the way this final build turned out, having that little tiny piece cut out around the entire top of this tomb area. Now we get to go in and kind of destroy what we've been working on, right? We're going to add some chips to the base. We're going to add some cracks um, around the whole thing. You know, this is all up to you and your taste, how destroyed you want this thing or how old you want it. And then obviously we're going to go and add some texture with some aluminum foil. And then once I'm done with the aluminum foil, I like to use this tool to kind of go over the whole thing. That way, if there's any smaller spots, at least everything's got texture to it. And obviously, don't forget about the stairs and the interior of the tomb for any uh, aging effects that you're going to apply. Now, these runes, again, you've seen these in the Dwarven door. I've transferred some of these, again, to keep the architecture kind of the same with the whole thing and have it flow together. Basically, hand-drawn uh, some of these around the whole thing and use the hot wire knife to cut them out. Now, we've got a little bit of a lighting change here. I'm out in my garage. When I was at Scott's house and we decided to meet and talk about doing this series and collaboration together, I came across these little bookends, and he mentioned that I could have one of them for the series so he ended up cutting the bottom off where his feet are right there again it was a bookend and it made a really flush piece and this is uh just i guess me being uh the whole detail aspect of this i really didn't like that it was a square end so i want to carry the tiers of the tomb around to this little piece as well and if you look on the bottom i actually drew some cracks on the face of the tomb where his feet are Now I'm not using Mod Podge to prime this, obviously I'm using this surface primer. The rest of the build in the background did get a coat of Mod Podge. Now all of this can get glued down. I left the pillars in place so that I could place it properly, but again, don't glue those down. You want to be able to use those in other adventures separate from this tomb. All right, now we got some embellishments. This is where it gets really fun as well. Again, same as the LED torch video set up for this uh, LED right here. And I'm adding some candle drips 
onto this. We're gonna make a candle that's gonna go at the foot of the tomb. And it's gonna look really good flickering uh, once it's all set up. And all I'm doing here obviously is adding the flame. It works really well to dip that flame right there in some cold water as you're working on it. All right, breaking out a little bit of green stuff, we're gonna make a bowl here. And I'm gonna put some like fire salts or some type of oil or whatever you wanna put in this bowl at the foot of the table. And this is gonna be a couple mountain flowers I want to have on that table as an offering as well. You want to make sure that the tool that you're using, um, you've got some water nearby that you can kind of keep water on it. That way it doesn't stick. The green stuff doesn't stick to it. Just doing a couple leaves on the flowers. And you want to give this about 24 hours to cure. All right, back to the coins and all these little bits and pieces here that we came up with. I primed anything I want to really stand out in some Vallejo white. And now it's time to start painting this whole thing up. Again, the base color for the tomb is the same as the pillars and the door, but we're gonna do something a little different when it comes to dry brushing to make this tomb stand out just a little bit more. All of these runes get a little bit of a gold paint. And again, with that white background, it's gonna really make those runes stand out more than if I had just painted them over a black Mod Podge. And don't worry about going outside the lines because look how easy it is to clean it up just like that. Just don't press too hard on the brush. All right, so for my mountain flowers, I had envisioned purple and like a deep blue or like an indigo type of color. So that's all I did. The stems are like a forest green. I ended up dry brushing those with, I believe it was a goblin green by Vallejo. And then here I'm just mixing some blue and some of that purple to kind of keep the colors somewhat similar. And then I'm gonna dry brush these with just some white mixed into those base colors. All right, so there's the bowl. I had painted that tan I used Agrax Earthshade for a wash. And now I'm gonna put in, you know, this could be anything. It could be whatever you wanna put in this bowl for an offering or oil or whatever it is. Okay, grabbing one of my favorite dry brushes here. I'm gonna dry brush the tomb in some pewter gray. And then this country twill is kind of the secret. And you can see that little tiny piece so that rim that we cut out around the whole tomb how awesome and how that stands out now and this country twill adds a nice light tan or brown to the whole tomb makes it stand out from the other builds and looks really really nice now a cool little secret when you shake up your homemade wash a lot of times it's it all bubbly and foamy uh, it's kind of a pain to work with dump it out very slowly into another container with just the liquid and you're foam free. So once you've done that, you know, black wash the entire build. Now I didn't want black wash really to be resting inside those runes. I wanted those to stand out. So I took a little bit of canned air just to blow the wash away from those. Now we used bronze for the top of these pillars. Now I'm using a polished gold to go around the rim and the edges here. That way I was kind of hoping that the polished gold would help the light illuminate a little bit better off of those once the diodes are in. Now we're using the other side of the coin, which is the dwarven face for the tomb. I thought that fit a little bit better than the ax side that we used on the dwarven door. For these, I'm using tacky glue to hold the flowers and the bowl in place. And don't worry about the excess tacky glue. That's going to dry clear, and you won't see that in the final result. And then I put a little bit with a toothpick, uh, some little dots of glue, 
and piece by piece um, <laughs> I didn't have to do much uh, to get the glitter out of that jar I'm just placing a few uh, coins on the altar or the, the little table here and then finally uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little mix of a couple of uh, pigments and um, you know apply to the stairs you can see I already did around the base of the tomb and once we have this all in place we're gonna hit this whole craft up with some Krylon matte finish and that's really gonna knock down the color of the pigment so I like to go a little bit heavier on it when I place it on here All right, so if you've enjoyed this video and you want to build it exactly how I did, you're going to need to pick up that Dwarven bookend from a site on eBay called Better Realms and Dungeons Terrain. Now, I contacted them because they're currently out of stock for that item, and I was told that they're definitely getting them back in stock, but they got to wait a little while because they come from overseas, and because of COVID, they're not shipping them. So just keep an eye on his shop. Now, also, keep in mind, you can make your own top in the meantime with some foam, and add a bunch of embellishments to it like swords and shields or whatever you want or just do some engraving into the top of the uh, tomb slab. Again, I'm a big believer also in using these magnets to get more versatility out of your crafts like the pillars with the orbs. There's no reason to glue those on so you can't break them off and use them individually. I've got links again to all the items I used in the video, the tools and the supplies to my Amazon links. Head on over there, check out those items, pick them up. And while you're at it, head on over to Patreon. It's support over there on one of my five tiers that really helps me fund this channel. I've got a lot of really great things planned, and that funding will go a long way. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.